In Pakistan, two major parties have agreed to join forces to form a government. That's after last week's election failed to produce a decisive winner. Former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's party has announced that he has nominated his younger brother, Shabazz, for the top job. They will partner with the Pakistan People's Party and other smaller parties. Now, the move appears to end the ambitions of former Prime Minister Imran Khan's PTI party to form a government. Khan's party was barred from elections, but independent candidates backed by him won the most seats. And for more, we're joined now by Akbar Ahmed, a professor at the American University in Washington, D.C., and a former Pakistani ambassador to the U.K. and Ireland. Welcome to DW, Mr. Akbar. What more can you tell us Thank about you, this? Co what more can you tell us about this coalition? Well, the politics of Pakistan present us with an exquisite mathematical conundrum. You have three major parties who won. Uh, lots of seats in parliament, but none of them can form a government on their own. They have to form coalitions. So Nawaz Sharif, the head of the Muslim League, is allying with the PPP, headed by Mr. Zardari and Bilawal Bhutto, to form the government. And he has nominated his brother, Shabazz Sharif, who was prime minister previously, to be the next prime minister. Imran Khan, who has about 100 part, uh, members, uh, mainly independent, is reaching out to the religious parties. And again, he's not been able to form enough uh, of a group to become, to form a government. So you have Nawaz Sharif's party, the Muslim League, forming a government, but it will remain a feeble government because it will constantly rely on its coalition partner, the PPP, who are wanting, in fact, demanding the presidency. So if Shabazz Sharif becomes a prime minister, then Mr. Zardari, who was pre president previously, becomes a president again. And these are the same figures that Imran Khan has been attacking as corrupt and incompetent. So we are, in a sense, back to square one. Can I ask you, I mean, do Imran Khan's independence have any chance at all of still forming a government? Not at the moment, because the numbers don't add up. At the same time, Imran Khan has unleashed forces which tap into the people, into the ordinary people, the Pakistanis, they tap into the anger, the anger with the administration, with the incompetence of the uh, civil administration, the corruption, the law and order situation, the economic crisis. And that anger is not going to disappear unless the government solves these problems. And that is the issue. It's not the formation of government. It's a government that can competently and efficiently solve the problems of Pakistan. And the people of Pakistan are very, very vocal now. You heard them during the elections accusing the government of rigging and accusing the government of supporting corrupt uh, uh, representatives and leaders. So in one very dramatic sense, we are back to square one and the new government will face many, many challenges and has to act quickly with wisdom and with compassion. Can I ask you, the, the elephant in the room, of course, is the role of the Pakistani military. What is their involvement in these closed door talks? Anya, a very shrewd question, because the army indeed does play a critical role. It's not always visible, but it does remain a potent force in Pakistan politics. And again, again, I can't speak for the army, but I would imagine that they would want a coalition government precisely because it will remain a weak government and therefore allow the army to have some say in foreign matters and uh, uh, internal security and so on. So it remains there and yet is not visible. Uh, but the people of Pakistan have, I think, um, uh, have an understanding of what's going on. And therefore, the army itself, for the first time in the history of Pakistan, has gone in for a lot of criticism. So unfortunately, because this is dividing something that so far has not been divided, not been exposed, so a lot of the uh, army generals, in fact, are being personally attacked. If you go online go in the media, you'll see a lot of very vitriolic material circulating. So the army is there, but invisible, as it were, but at the same time, people understand its, uh, its uh, strength and importance. Remember the size. It's a huge army. Uh, so far, it's a very well-organized army, very efficient army. And unfortunately, it's been, as far as the public is concerned, used in these elections in a negative way. Akbar Ahmed from the American University in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you, Anil.